Today we're going to be talking about how you can travel for cheap and on a budget so you can travel more in 2022. My name is Abna and I'm the Travel Enthusiast Travelling Tuesdays. When I called the travel blog, I was a broke student in university. I did crazy things to be able to travel on the weekends on a budget in between classes, like taking a 16 hour bus ride from Paris to Madrid because it was cheaper than flying, and going to Paris overnight and staying all up with my friends because we literally weren't gonna buy accommodation. When I graduated from university, I did a budget trip to the Caribbean, going to luxury islands such as St. Lucia, but still finding accommodation for about £16 a night and hitchhiking through Martinique. I then backpacked through Southeast Asia and I was staying in accommodation for five to six pounds per night. I was finding meals to eat for just two pounds, three pounds. And even though I was super broke, I still came back with five pounds to my name. I now work a nine to five, so I'm not so broke, but I still live in expensive London. I need to balance my money between having an expensive commute, rent, social life, and still have savings and money to travel. Despite having so many things to balance, I have still been able to travel to nine countries and counting in 2021. And that could be you in 2022 if you follow my budget tips on how I've done this. In this video, I'm gonna be going into four key budget tips you need to know if to travel for cheap and I have a bonus final tip to show you how you can travel for free. So stay tuned, let's get into it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Being flexible where you want to go is really important when you're looking to travel on a budget. We all have that list of dream places we would love to travel to, but I would encourage you to think about why you want to travel to this place and could you find that somewhere else that's more budget friendly? For example, you may want to travel to the Maldives. I mean, we all do, who doesn't want to? But why are you going to the Maldives? Why do you want to go there? Do you want to go there because you're looking for crystal clear water and white sand? Well, you could go to the Maldives and find that, or you could go to the Philippines, for example, and get the same thing for 20% of the price. So really think about why you're going to a place and if you can find the same things that you're looking for, but in another place that's more budget friendly. When you look at countries or destinations to go to, in order to ascertain how budget friendly they are, I would encourage you to look at the cost of living in that place. So websites such as as Batizan, Numbio, or Nomad List. I really love Nomad List. Nomad List literally breaks down to you so many factors about going and living in a place. I'm thinking about going to Lisbon, for example, and I literally can see their ranking of different things about Lisbon, such as the quality of life, internet connection, how fast it is, but especially the cost. And I can literally scroll to the page where they break down the cost of living in Lisbon. They break down the cost of living for if you're a nomad or if you're local. So obviously a generic average cost of living for a country will be leveled up to if you are local living there. But as a tourist, you're gonna be doing so many activities, staying in hotels, your cost is gonna be way more than a local's living there. So I love the fact that they break down and show you the cost of living for a nomad. They show you the average price for a hotel. They will show you like how much Airbnb costs, how much does a dinner cost, how much does a Coke cost? And all those things can help you ascertain sort of how expensive this place is gonna be. And they do that for so many cities and destinations around the world. Another website I can recommend is budgetyourtrip.com. Budget your trip Dot com actually gets information for people who have traveled to the destination you're looking at as to how much they spent when they traveled there. And they aggregate this and then show you the average cost of traveling to that place. It's a really great resource and I recommend that you use it. Ultimately, there's some regions of the world which would be much cheaper than other regions. Relatively, if you go to Central America or South America, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than if you go to North America. Eastern Europe is gonna be relatively cheaper than Western Europe. Southeast Asia countries such as Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia are gonna be so much cheaper than other surrounding countries such as South Korea, Japan, and Singapore. So keep those things in mind. We've all heard a saying, it's the journey, not the destination that counts. After tip one, you know the destination counts, but the journey counts even more. 
because transport is one of the biggest costs when you're traveling and if you're going to a budget friendly country but it's going to cost your leg and an arm to get there that's not a very cheap holiday at all if you take my first tip seriously about being flexible about where you want to go to you can get some really cheap flights one cheap travel hack i have is going on skyscanner which is a flight search engine and type in where you live so for maybe london and make a destination everywhere skyscanner will show you every single flight that's leaving from your local airport on a certain date but will rank them according to price i did this recently and honestly it was crazy i was finding flights out of london for nine pounds return crazy those are cheap flights and if you're flexible about where you go as long as the flight is cheap the place is budget friendly you can go to some really cool and interesting destinations another thing is to join airline loyalty programs you can pay forward for your future flights by getting miles for any flights you take and then using those miles to make your future flights cheaper and use the same airline if you're in an airline that's part of an alliance you can use miles from a flight you take with one airline and use those same miles to make another flight you take with another airline later much cheaper so i definitely recommend that i know people optimize their credit cards in order to get miles too but i'm not an expert on that but definitely set it up if you use credit cards another thing to consider is that you don't always need to fly i think the pandemic has highlighted the sustainability point and the budget friendly point around staying in your own country and doing staycations and local travels where you literally just need to take a train or a bus to go to where you need to go to even cross country there's so many options other than flights you can take buses there are bus companies like Webus, Megabus, Flixbus that do trips between one country to another. I regularly, when I was a student living in France, I was super broke, would take the bus in between London and Paris for 20 pounds one way, guys. I'm not joking. Cheap bus rides. Also, trains can also be cheaper than flying. In Europe, we have Interrail or the EU Rail Pass where you can get discounted long distance train rides. If you're in Europe, I'd also recommend using the website Omeo in order to compare different deals between plane, train and bus prices in order to make sure you're choosing the cheapest way of traveling to your destination. In Europe, I'd also recommend car sharing. If you're taking a popular route, then there is a very high chance that someone else is taking the same route as you in their car and you can grab a seat in their vehicle for a very low price. A platform you can use for car sharing is blah blah car and I highly recommend it. Also let's talk about transport when you're at your destination. I would recommend that you take public transport if there's a metro system, a train system, go for it. But some people I know when they're on vacation or holiday, they're like, I'm on holiday, I'm taking a taxi, I'm relaxing in my own private vehicle. I get you, but there are budget savvy ways to take taxis. One, make sure you negotiate the price before you get into a taxi, before you start the ride. In a lot of countries, they'll tell you that their meter is broken. That's a taxi scam. Don't fall for it. Definitely set the price before you take the taxi. Also, if you're using Uber, Try and find out if there are local versions of Uber in the country you're in and use those instead because they're usually much cheaper. For example, in Southeast Asia, they use Grab on Bali, they use Gojek, and prices on those apps will be much cheaper than the Uber. So definitely check that out. Budget accommodation options exist. I always recommend hostels and wait, 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 wait. Whenever I mention hostels, people literally tune out they're like we're not doing that hostels are filled with rats and bed bugs and everything and you know hostels aren't for everyone there are other different budget accommodation options but let me just talk about hostels for one second if you're young like me you're under 30 you know you know you're going on this trip you're not really going to be accommodation much then it's worth going for a hostel you can get hostels for 20 pounds per night in europe literally 10 pounds less in like southeast asia and honestly it will literally save you so much money the same way there are five star hotels and one star hotels there's range when it comes to hostels i stayed in a hostel in bali 
and it looks like this. It looks so luxurious. It looks like I was living in my own villa. We used to have these massive pool parties. I was a slide into the pool. And like people who lived in Bali, like expats, would come to our hostel for pool parties. Like it was that cool. This is what I'd eat for breakfast. So honestly, there is a range when it comes to hostels. There are shabby ones, party ones, but also really nice ones. If you're looking for those really nice ones, I'd recommend Hostel World. On Hostel World, you can find a wide selection of different hostels with reviews from travelers so you can know the ones that are good the ones that fit what you want hostels aside you can also do airbnb airbnb can be very budget friendly and i know airbnb has gotten a bad rap in recent years because of the way it's affecting the rental market in certain places but if you stay in airbnb where you're just literally renting a room in a family house you get the cultural interaction with that family with those locals whilst renting just a room so it's usually cheaper than if you're renting like a whole apartment etc so i would recommend the airbnb that is how i got my 16 pound per a night accommodation in st lucia i would just say that if you are looking for a normal hotel and using those hotel search engine sites such as hotel.com booking.com agoda expedia i would make sure you rank your search options from cheapest to more expensive you can see the cheapest hotels first i would also recommend that you use the apps instead of a website and you have your account on those platforms the reason why i'm saying this is because a lot of websites are trying to get people who are loyal to them and to incentivize you to do this they're going to give you cheaper prices so if you download that app or if you have an account on their platform they're going to give you discounts <laughs> Travel is objectively cheaper when you go to a place where you know someone in that place. Period. Like, this is an objective truth that I have learned over traveling the past couple of years. If you are going somewhere and you choose a place where you have family or you have a friend from school maybe who's moved away, an international student you know from college, you know from the country, you're going to visit their country, hit them up stay with them or if you don't want to stay with them you're in space like at least ask them out for dinner or ask them for tips ask them for recommendations or they may be your local guide you may get a free local guide free food maybe free accommodation and make your trip so much cheaper than what it would have been if you didn't know a single soul if you're traveling to a place where you don't know anyone you can still make your trip a lot cheaper by befriending locals, the people that serve you in restaurants, the receptionists at your accommodation. Ask them, where do the locals go? What do you recommend? Where should I go eat that's like budget friendly? They will be able to tell you way more than the recommendations you see online. And if you're like, you know, that person who's social, you don't really know people who live outside of your city or your town, I would say Facebook groups are the plug. Search your destination, search expat groups in that destination and you will find a ton and honestly we go on there and you're like i'm looking for budget friendly recommendations in this place those people that live there were able to recommend you some good spots so you can save yourself some money and my final bonus tip on how to travel for free this is for people who are a bit young or you are slow traveling no matter your age if you're a slow traveler and you have the time you can travel for free by exchanging your labor for travel. So you can get jobs that are really travel friendly, such as au pairing, so being a nanny for family, or house sitting, where someone needs you to look after the house and they'll give you the house for free as your own accommodation, such as seasonal tourism jobs, so work in a hostel or hotel where they need your foreign language assets in order to really keep up the peak season and even seasonal jobs such as work on the farm a lot of people do that in new zealand and australia and get free accommodation free food and sometimes you, these jobs you may get paid as well when i was living in france i wanted to send my stays i actually worked in a hotel i was working as a receptionist and also in a restaurant i'll do four hours in the morning four hours in the evening and then the rest of my time i had to travel i could explore the local area and i did this in exchange for free board free accommodation free food and the chef's food was and about 400 500 euros per month 
uh, which is a really nice extra. If you want to find opportunities like this, I would recommend searching on the website World Packers. I have a link below that you can sign up to this website for free and search these opportunities. That's all for my video today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found a lot of value in it. As I said, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next one. Bye!